So we've been talking about the promised land from the New Testament perspective. We started to weave in the believer's rest and understanding what that meant. We know that we have a choice. And so in this last segment, we're going to talk about the response. We all, just like Joshua and Caleb and the 10 other spies, we all have to make a choice. And frankly, I find that even though I'm in the rest in Jesus Christ, I have to daily, moment by moment, choose to take these thoughts captive to the obedience of Christ and walk in the newness that is mine in Jesus Christ. That's a challenge. So Denton, can you talk a little bit about this? Is there something wrong with me that sometimes it's it's not easy? No, and and, uh, I think we, we have looked at the fact of our need to take God at his word and to realize that when he says something, he means it. But at the same time, in my own journey again, many times I've underestimated the struggle that we have and the power, the power of, of the flesh and the enemy in our in our life uh, who wants to pull us away. And you know, mm-hmm. and it's so easy to blame, you know, the the, uh, the the Israel. You know, what what was wrong with them? Why couldn't they see this? But then you stop and begin to realize it's it's so easy for us to be distracted, for us to fall back into into what I call the default position of our lives. You've even called it, and I like these words, the peril of unbelief. Mm-hmm. Can you mm-hmm. just? Unpack that a little bit for us, this idea of the peril of unbelief. Well, I, I think we, we just looked at, at, at the, the previous passage of realizing that, that uh, when, when we don't act upon what God shows us in our lives mm-hmm. and we step back into this, this uh, default position of, of faithlessness and, and not really trusting God, there are, you know, there are so many things that, that uh, the enemy can, can take advantage of in our lives. And, and bring bring pain upon our lives, but bring reproach upon the name of God. And I think just really, really realizing our lives, this peril, this it's it is a peril of great price uh, that that we need to understand. Lord, you want us to walk with you one step at a time, one day at a time. It's it's not a one time event that we say, okay, Lord, if I change my mind, I'll let you know. Mm. No, it's walking it out one day at a time. And uh, that goes back to the dependence piece. Yeah. So it's a, it's actually a growing dependence on him. And that's an okay place to be recognizing that we're dependent on him. I remember one time in a class, the students were so, participants were so surprised by, well, why am I thinking this thought? And I don't want to think this. And it's like, why are we surprised by the flesh? The flesh is going to do what it's going to do. We don't have to beat ourselves up for it, but we have to choose not to stay in that place, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> And, and instead, what, what, uh, what Paul reminds us of again in, in the, the great battle that's going on in all of our lives in Ephesians 6, mm-hmm. he's, he tells us, stand firm. Yeah. Hupo meno. Uh, act, act on what God is saying. Stand firm. Put on the full armor of God. And when we do, we have the opportunity to remain in that position of rest. Wow. Uh, you know, I want to go, we started in the with Abraham, we went back to the garden and now we're, we're in our own believer's rest. But I'd like to go back for just a minute to Adam and Eve. Um, you know, Eve tried to blame the serpent and then Adam tried to blame Eve. But the reality is they didn't have anyone to blame but themselves. And I know it's tough love at this moment, but we don't have anyone to blame but ourselves. Mm if we're walking in our unbelief. We've been given the promise. God has demonstrated his character for us. He's pursued us in love. This is sobering to me to think that there are times in my life where I still choose to walk in this unbelief. So, but it's also constructive because we are empowered because of the Holy Spirit dwelling therein to appropriate our faith. Mm-hmm. and to live and walk in the newness, going all the way back to that passage you talked about in Ephesians, I think it was 1-9, the newness that we have in Jesus Christ. I can't remember, I'd have to flip over to it. Uh, 118. Uh, 118, yeah. thank you. Yeah, so you read that a few you know, points ago. So, this life that I live is no longer mine. 
It's Jesus Christ crucified in me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That protects against this peril of unbelief. Yes, it does. And, uh, and of, of all the verses of scripture, uh, Paul's uh, statement here in Galatians 2.20 is, is one of the most profound that we could ever look at. When he kind of summarizes what is has actually taken place and and is taking place in in, in the life of the of, of a believer who's following God, and he says, uh, "I have been crucified with Christ." It's a done deal. It's a finished uh, transaction. It's 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 in the past, and then he says, "It's no longer I who live, but but it's Christ living in me." So to me, it's, it's, it's acknowledging what we just read a minute ago about being partakers of the divine nature. Mm -hmm. the, the whole idea of embracing the fact that Christ, you're living in me today. Mm -hmm. And the life which I now live in the flesh, Paul says, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave itself for me. And we begin to realize, wow, Lord, am I trusting in my own efforts to, uh, to live out this Christian life or am I stepping back and, and, and identifying with what you have done in, in me. You have enabled me to die to who I used to be and to be risen to this new life where Christ is living his life in me. That's what, that's what believers rest in. So it's, it's not so much, wow, Lord, I'm living for you, but, but where God wants to bring us is, wow, Lord, it's you living through me. Mm. And uh, this promised land, to me, is a dynamic, energized relationship with Christ through the power of Christ living in me. And, uh, and, and as he lives in me and through me, every demand that is being put upon my life will be met in him. That's, wow. that's where um, I hope I'm heading one day. <laughs> Well, uh, thank you for joining us as you begin to prepare for your upcoming class. We hope that you've enjoyed this time and it's illuminated you a little bit. As you move through the material over the next 13 uh, sessions, you will find that you start to move deeper and deeper into this growing dependency on your Lord and your Savior. And as that happens, that freedom and that peace that Denton and I have been talking about before and which Jesus promises us starts to become more and more part of who you are and how you live this out. And eventually what happens is someone else is going to say to you, you're saying to yourself, wow, I'm living for the Lord. And someone else is going to show up and say, wow, Jesus is living through you. And that's the ultimate expression of our life in the promised land. We look forward to seeing you in your class.